Accusations are flying between the U.S. and China after a dangerous near collision between warships from both sides. The incident happened during a joint naval exercise between the U.S. and Canadian, the Canadian Navy in the Taiwan Strait. Video showing the near collision was captured by a news crew on a nearby ship. You can see the Chinese destroyer cutting across the front of the U.S. ship. CNN Pentagon correspondent Oren Lieberman is with us. Oren, both sides are blaming each other for this incident. So what do we know right now? And Paula, that's so common when we see encounters between the Chinese and the U.S. military, two entirely different narratives of what happened. From the U.S. perspective, it was a U.S. Navy ship, a destroyer, the USS Chenghu, sailing with a Canadian ship through the Taiwan Strait, which under international law is international uh, is an international waterway, sailing through that when, according to U.S. Indo-Pacific Command, a Chinese Navy vessel or a Chinese military vessel cut 150 yards in front of the U.S. ship and then circled back and cut two thousand yards in front of that ship again from the u.s perspective it is china here that is to blame for what they called an unsafe maneuver there's great risk to safety the safety of mariners um, we don't seek a confrontation with china but those uh those mariners out there were, were clearly acting in an unsafe way we were uh operating in the international laws of the sea the rules of the road so to speak which is again internationally accepted and the chinese were acting unsafe From China's perspective, it's almost as if they're describing an entirely different encounter. China's defense minister, speaking at the Shangri-La Dialogue in Singapore just hours after this happened, said the U.S. wasn't there for peaceful purposes. They were looking there for a provocation by sailing through the Taiwan Strait. And that gets to a disagreement about simply the rules of the road, as the U.S. says, and, and what's allowed there. The U.S. and others view that as international waterways. We saw the same sort of disagreement just a couple of weeks ago over the South China Sea when a uh, Chinese fighter jet intercepted a U.S. reconnaissance aircraft there. Once again, U.S. said it was an international airspace and had the right to be there under international law. China, however, said it was uh, essentially encroaching upon Chinese sovereignty. So there you see the disagreements and how they can quickly lead to tensions, Paula. Oren, you are currently in Normandy for the 79th anniversary of D-Day with General Mark Milley. So what message did he have? Well, General Mark Milley gave a speech just a short time ago at what's known as the Iron Mike Memorial from the D-Day uh, invasion, the landings here that led to the liberation of Europe in World War II. This is personally and professionally imp important to him, personally because his uncle landed here and his father fought in the Pacific, but professionally because especially D-Day highlights the importance of, of unity and working together. In that case, it was the U.S. working with uh, England and others. It is a message that has as much relevance, especially to the Pentagon today, and you see that, especially with China, as the U.S. works with South Korea, Japan, Australia, and you even see it when it comes to Ukraine, the U.S. working with NATO nations. So that message of unity bridging the nearly eight decades between what we're here to commemorate and looking at the present day situation so much. Warren Lieberman, thank you. And let's get more on this incident in the Taiwan Strait. Cedric Layton is a retired U.S. Air Force colonel and a CNN military analyst. When you look at that video, what is your assessment? So, Paula, the first thing that I see, of course, is a very close maneuver by the Chinese got a missile destroyer coming across the front of the USS uh, Chonghun. And that is a really dangerous thing to do. I mean, we're talking a very short distance. Uh, something could go terribly wrong. And uh, it really does show a degree of unprofessionalism on the part of the Chinese. Uh, they are really uh, risking a lot here by, by doing this. We're talking, you know, the collision of uh, million dollar objects here uh, very, very qu happening very quickly. So it is as dangerous as it looks? Absolutely. It's incredibly dangerous. And uh, one of the key things that you have to keep in mind, if you're really right there at the uh, bow of the ship and you see something like this happen, it's a lot closer than it appears in this video. And uh, the maneuvers that the U.S. captain, uh, naval captain had to do in order to avoid collision uh, it were pretty considerable. He had to reduce speed drastically. Uh, he had to make sure that his ship wasn't going to cut across uh, the Chinese ship. And that uh, 
uh, that is, uh, you know, is something that they have to be prepared for. And clearly, our, our sailors are exceptionally professional, but it is something that uh, you know, really requires them to be highly vigilant. And it also requires them to, uh, you know, be able to conduct evasive maneuvers if necessary. And this isn't the only recent incident. Of course, a Chinese fighter jet intercepted a U.S. spy plane in international airspace just last week. So what is the strategy here for China? So the basic strategy, Paula, seems to be that they want to harass as many U.S. ships and planes as possible. Uh, both the ship and the plane uh, were conducting uh, uh, maneuvers in uh, international airspace and uh, on international waterways, and that is, you know, key for us. We want to keep uh, the what we call the uh, sea lanes of communication open. We want to keep the airways open, and the reason we are there is, in uh, the case of the RC-135 uh, spy plane, we want to make sure that uh, we can monitor what the Chinese are doing. Uh, in the case of uh, the destroyer, uh, we want to make sure that we can transit these areas like the Taiwan. Juan Strait, uh, which covers a, a large portion of trade. Basically, we're talking 60% of all container ships go through here during any given point in time. That's 60% of all container ships in the world. So we want to maintain the trade routes that exist. We also want to make sure that international law is followed in these areas. And by transiting these areas, we assure that that can happen. And if the Chinese interfere in that, uh, they're indicating that they don't want that kind of international trade to continue. And that uh, that is a, a dangerous thing, not only militarily, but also economically. Well, China reportedly declined an offer for Defense Secretary Austin to meet his Chinese counterpart at a conference in Singapore this week. Without that kind of dialogue, is de-escalation even possible right now? It's really difficult, especially, you know, given the top-down nature of the Chinese system. If the Minister of Defense doesn't meet with the Secretary of Defense on the U.S. side, uh, then chances are that uh, people at the intermediate levels of command aren't going to be meeting either. And that is a real problem, because uh, if you can't have that dialogue, if you can't deconflict operations, that becomes a major issue, and uh, that could result in miscalculation. And as such, it's really dangerous. Colonel Cedric Layton, thank you so much. You bet, Paula.